That's funny. Why is it funny? Well, you don't look like an OU Palm girl. Right? Like, what am I supposed to say back to that? I was like, uh, well, okay. Hold on one second. Guys. So that kind of, you know, that really hurt my feelings, and I didn't understand why she would say that, and I didn't understand what she meant by that. But at the same time, I thought, well, who are you to say that I do or don't look like a little palm girl? And that's the case with many bullying. Lots of bullying is verbal. People say, putting someone else down, saying that you're not good enough, saying that you're too much of this or too much of that. But who is it someone else's, who gives someone else the right to judge you? It doesn't make any sense. Because I know that personally, I worked hard, I did the best that I could, and that's all I could ask for. So if I made POM or if I didn't make the OU POM squad, it, wasn't it didn't matter what she said, that didn't affect me. Sure, maybe upset for a second, but then I got over it. So if you ever encounter bullying or if you see someone else getting bullied, stick up for that person. Or just, if they're bullying at you, just ignore it. It's all you can do. Because people are always going to try to put you down, try to make you feel like you're not good enough. But you can be. As long as you work for something, then you can one's be. Dignity, one's dignity may be assaulted, vandalized, and cruelly mocked. But it can never be taken away unless it's surrendered. So just remember that. Know what you're good at and feel confident in what you're good at. My dad used to smoke cigarettes. He was in the army, so, you know, and actually he fell into that habit. He smoked so many cigarettes, though, and he became so addicted that he didn't only smoke one package a day. He smoked two whole packages a day. That's a lot of cigarettes. So not only is that really expensive, but it made his teeth yellow, and he smelled really bad, and it was starting to do some bad things to his health. So my dad met my mother when he was over serving in Korea, and they fell in love, and he proposed. Now when he proposed, my mom looks at him and she goes, I'm not going to marry you until you quit smoking. So my dad decided, well, you know what, I love this woman, I'm going to quit smoking. Was it easy? He told me to this day it is still one of the most difficult things he's ever had to do. But he did it, because he worked hard, he focused, and he had lots of support from his friends and family. And he quit smoking, and he hasn't had a cigarette in 30 years. But he also told me that, even though it's been 30 years, every once in a while, out of nowhere, he'll suddenly crave a cigarette. Just every once in a while. Even though it's been 30 years since he's had one. So does he go ahead and smoke one? Of course not. But he still has that feeling every once in a while. So if you ever have a friend who says, eh, you start smoking, it's okay, you can quit whenever, I guarantee you it's not that simple. Just ask my dad. Now next I want to talk about is drugs. <laughs> so this is a picture of your typical healthy looking brain. This is what we want all of our brains to look like. It's kind of pink, it's kind of squishy looking. It has this nice hemisphere here in the middle, or division in the middle. And you can tell there's two separate hemispheres. Now a healthy brain weighs about three pounds. Kind of big. And in our brains we have these things called neurotransmitters. And all that basically means is that there's, those are the chemical reactions that go on in your brain that allow you to do things. Move your hands, move your feet, want to eat chocolate. That's what the neurotransmitters do, and they run along these pathways in your brain. Now, once you start to do drugs, these pathways, they change. And they change permanently. Now, this next picture is a little gross. So just, if you don't like gross pictures, just don't look at it. Um, but it's of a man, his brain, and he lived here in Oklahoma. He was 40 years old when he died, and he died because he was addicted to drugs. This is what his brain looked like. Notice his brain isn't pink anymore. It's not really squishy either. It kind of just looks like a hard rock. 
it's kind of a gray and purple color, and you don't see that division in the middle anymore. Nor can you even tell that there's two different hemispheres. Remember how I said a healthy brain weighs three pounds? His brain weighed 1.5 pounds, half of the weight of a normal healthy brain. So was he thinking about watching the football game coming up or watching the basketball game, hanging out with his friends, going to the movies? All he was concerned about is how can I get more drugs? My body needs more drugs. And eventually it killed him. So I don't know about you all, but I definitely know I'd rather my brain look like the other one than his. Now this last one I want to talk about is alcohol, and I actually need a volunteer. Let me get some more. All right, Andre. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so what I have here is I have just a couple coins, not a big deal, just a couple pennies and nickels, dimes. And real quick, we're gonna see how long. Hold this for a second. Sorry. We're gonna see how long it takes them to pick these up. We're just we're just gonna pick these up off the floor one at a time. We're just gonna see how long it takes, okay? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys pick them all up one at a time, okay? Ready? On your mark, get set, go. One, two, four, five, six, seven. Okay, set. Good. No. <laughs> Two seconds, sorry. I need a tape here. Now what I have here are these alcohol impairment bottles. So what they're going to do is they're going to mess up your vision to show you what it would look like if you were drunk. And we're going to see if it takes them the same amount of time. So go ahead and put these on. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> I can't see! Look at me real quick. Alright, ready? We're going to try it again. Get set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to the right, to the right, twelve, to the left, other left, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, good. All right, so what did it look like when you had these goggles on? I couldn't see. <laughs> did you like how it looked? No. Do you think that... I have a friend named Taloa. Now, Taloa is this fantastic dancer. I mean, she was so good. She tried out with Disney, and she got this part where she was going to be able to go to China and dance around in China for a whole summer. It's a pretty cool deal. I mean, she's living the dream right now. She wanted, that's all she wanted to do was just dance. She's going to get paid for it, so she was excited. But unfortunately, last spring, Tolo was walking across the street, like she does all the time, and she got hit by a drunk driver. Now, Taloa isn't able to go to China anymore. She isn't able to do what she dreamed of doing. Because... Not only can she no longer dance, but she can't walk anymore either, because she's paralyzed from the waist down. Now, was that fair to her? She was just minding her own business. Now, this driver, what's really interesting is, not only was he under the age of 21, but it was his very first time drinking alcohol. And he made the bad decision to drink way too much and to continue to get behind the wheel and drive. So not only has he ruined his own life because he's going to be in jail for probably the rest of his life, but he ruined someone else's. Bad choices don't only have the option of hurting ourselves, but they can hurt other people. And we have to think about that. We have to think past the things that we're doing right now. And how can it affect us in five years, ten years? Because the choices we make today have that ability. 